Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the possibility of finding life on other planets. But more specifically we're talking about the so-called hydrogen planets. Planets where the actual atmosphere is not the same as on Earth. So let's talk about this new study that came out not so long ago and welcome to Odemai. <laughs> Okay, so today we know that life does not need oxygen to survive. As a matter of fact, life on Earth started when there was practically no oxygen on the planet at all. And even though the earliest Earth probably looked something like this, it didn't really take long for Earth to look slightly different. And we know all of this because we've discovered some of the most ancient life on Earth right here in Australia. These fossils that are practically several billion years old suggest to us that life back then was very different and the atmosphere of Earth was also very different as well. As a matter of fact, if we actually look at the history of our planet from the geological perspective, today we know, for example, that up until about 2.3 billion years ago, most of the atmosphere on our planet Earth was actually not really rich in oxygen, so most of life on Earth had to rely on something completely different, most likely CO2 and possibly even hydrogen. Then about 2.3 billion years ago, the event known as Great Oxygenation Event completely transformed the atmosphere of our planet, turning it into the world we know today. At the same time, this is probably the first time that the Earth actually turned into so-called Ice Bowl Earth, and all of this was because the CO2 levels fell dramatically, oxygen was pretty much everywhere, and the planet was suddenly very, very cold. But the life on Earth did start when the Earth itself did not have oxygen and most of the atmosphere was entirely different. And a lot of these ancient bacteria even today proliferate in areas where there is no oxygen, like for example, inside of you and me. Basically, in our guts there is quite a lot of bacteria that survive quite well without any oxygen. So this is something we know for a fact. And so this is exactly why the scientists behind this paper decided to conduct the experiment and find out if the modern life, basically bacteria that we currently have today, would be able to survive in more extreme conditions with atmosphere entirely different from the atmosphere of Earth today. The main purpose of this experiment was to actually see if maybe we should be focusing on looking for life in planets that don't actually have similar conditions to Earth, including of course some of the planets we currently have in the solar system. And so the scientists behind this paper created this relatively simple experiment. They took E. coli, which is practically the most studied bacterium on the planet, this is the most well-known bacterium to us, and also common yeast, and decided to place them in essentially atmospheric conditions different from planet Earth. And in simpler terms, they took the bacterium and the yeast and they placed them into conditions of, for example, enriched nitrogen and CO2, like in this case, and then watched this bacterium grow and spread across the entire culture. They did this for several different uh, atmospheric conditions, including the atmosphere entirely composed of hydrogen and entirely composed of helium, just to see how these little guys would be able to handle these different uh, environmental conditions. And as you can probably imagine, it went really, really well. They even created a, this relatively simple summary of everything they've achieved, and essentially, for the most part, both E. coli and the yeast were able to grow in hydrogen conditions just as well, or almost as well, as they did in typical oxygenated environment. Basically, for bacteria and yeast, it does not matter what the actual atmosphere is made out of, as long as it's not toxic. And since hydrogen, nitrogen, CO2, and helium are not toxic gases, all of the bacteria were totally fine living in these conditions, also meaning that as long as you give them enough food and as long as you provide nutrition for them, they'll be able to survive around any planet in any atmospheric conditions out there. And although this is definitely not a surprising discovery, what is surprising here is how well the bacterium and the yeast were able to grow in these very foreign conditions and what all of this means for the discovery of alien life somewhere out there. First of all, this of course means that a typical object like this, Kepler-62e, basically a typical super-Earth that we think may have a lot of hydrogen on the surface and possibly even other gases, but probably not oxygen, would still be a perfectly good place for us to look for alien life. At least bacterial life, which seems to be totally fine surviving in these conditions. In other words, the discovery of life should not be limited to planets with oxygen, even though the signs of oxygen are probably going to be the first locations we look at when we are trying to find some kind of foreign life. But what's even more exciting about this discovery is that we could probably find life similar to life on early Earth, and obviously life similar to the ones you find inside of us, around objects that are not so foreign to our solar system. 
basically we're talking about objects in our solar system. Which objects do you know that have a lot of hydrogen in them? And what objects can you think of that may have displayed signs of potential unexplained phenomena when it comes to life? And one of them is actually right there. This is of course Saturn. Saturn and Jupiter are filled with hydrogen and are obviously filled with a lot of other stuff on the inside, including very Earth-like conditions. As a matter of fact, if you were to go inside of Saturn, or even inside Jupiter, you would actually discover conditions not so foreign to us. There's maybe a little bit more pressure, but the temperatures and the fact that there's actually water clouds here, and even things like methane clouds and a lot of other stuff that technically can easily be used by bacteria for, well, essentially food, does suggest that we might be able to find life around these planets as well, or basically inside of their atmosphere. And even though right now I'm just speculating, but this study itself provides enough reasons for us to actually try to look for life a little bit closer to home, around objects like Saturn and Jupiter, specifically in their atmosphere. Although here things will get a little bit more difficult, mostly because it's basically almost impossible for us to reach these locations without completely destroying the actual probe. And we know this because we did this back in 2003, when the so-called Galileo probe, after about 14 years in space, ended its mission by essentially entering the upper atmosphere of Jupiter, while being completely destroyed by the, well, combination of high speed, re-entry speed, and also very thick atmosphere of the planet. Here the speed was about 48 kilometers per second. So unfortunately the probe only got to measure some of the components of the upper atmosphere. It never really got to the part where we could have potentially found life. And one of the reasons why the probe was destroyed in this way was to essentially eliminate any chance of the probe itself contaminating the moons of Jupiter. But what the scientists back then didn't really kind of think about is, well, what if it contaminates the planet itself? And the idea here was that I guess uh, the heat would technically kill any of the bacteria and prevent this from happening. But you never know. For all we know, if there was no life on Jupiter, maybe there is now, because some of the bacteria could have survived the actual passage through the atmosphere. Either way, what the findings from this study suggest is that life could be present everywhere, at least simple life, bacterial life, the single-celled life that was present everywhere on Earth for billions of years. We are still not sure if we're going to find any complex life out there, but discovering simple life should not really be a problem as long as we know what to look for. The chances of discovering bacterial life are increasing with every single study we conduct, so it shouldn't really be a surprise if we find it sometime in the next decade or so. Although the real question in the future is going to be, did we find life that was originated from that particular location, or did we just find life from Earth that somehow managed to get to those locations, like for example Jupiter and Saturn, because we did send a lot of probes that could have been contaminated. But hopefully we'll get to ask these exciting questions sometime soon. It's been quite a while since we discovered something really amazing about various planets in our solar system, and hopefully we do discover something incredible about them in not so distant future, which will give us more reasons to come back both to Saturn and Jupiter, and to possibly even create a colony somewhere around them. And hopefully this location is going to be my favorite moon, Titan. But anyway, we'll talk more about discoveries coming from Titan and other similar moons in one of the future videos, but for now that's really it. It's a pretty exciting study, it does mean that life survives in other atmospheres quite easily, and it does suggest that life could be hiding right in front of our noses around Jupiter and Saturn as well. We just have to look a little bit harder. For now, that's all I wanted to mention. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot, and maybe consider buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm not really wearing right now because it's being washed, but I'm wearing something else that apparently is somewhat transparent, I didn't realize that you can actually see through it. Anyway, the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt is available in the description below as well. On that note, thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.